we have our underwater uh, Crichtonsauruses here. Yeah, about it, who cares about the fences, right? Well, um, the guests do. Yes, yes, we do. That was underwhelming. I thought that they were jumping around more. My and uh, whoops, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, milady. <laughs> Didn't mean to. Hallo, meine Damen und Herren. Ich heiße Tommy und ich möchte Sie in Jurassic Park Deutschland willkommen. And that's as much German as you will hear from me, because uh, German just doesn't like me. <laughs> I can't really speak German. I do understand German, but I don't want to traumatize you with it <laughs> in this part. But we are in Germany. We are in Jurassic Park, Germany, an herbivore sanctuary, all herbivore sanctuary. So I'm sorry, you carnivore lovers. This is only herbivores now, plus some flyers, plus some marine reptiles. I do love my herbivores. And as uh, this park was progressing, I decided that it would be herbivore only because I didn't have any carnivores in like half of it. And then I was like, it's actually so peaceful, so gentle, so gracious. I take a peaceful, gracious, and gentle carnivore um, herbivore over any carnivore any day. Even though Allosaurus, Baryonyx, Sukumimus are like my top favorite favorites, I uh, will say that I do prefer herbivores to carnivores. Unpopular opinion, but let's check this park. Let's actually go here. This is something that I tried. I was like, let me get a guest center, like an arrival point or something, and that I made from these. Um, what is it? Uh, the bunkers. I don't even, I don't use the bunkers like ever. So <laughs> it's like my guests are never happy with anything. There's no monorail in this park. So they were, they were not happy about uh, the traffic. So this is the arrival point with some, uh, uh, there are these carnivore enclosure markers because I didn't know back then, but yeah, well, what can I do? Uh, for a while, I couldn't edit this part because it broke. The file broke. Yes, I put too many rocks in this file again. But as you can see, we have the new fountains. They fixed the bugs, so I was able to come back to this park. However, <laughs> the park is in two different save files. Like the, the beach part of this park is in a different save file than the rest of it. Because initially when it broke, I was like, okay, this file is done. So let's uh, let me continue somewhere else. It was actually, it broke right when I was about to go down there. So I was like, okay, I can save this. I can do some editing magic on it with the park tour and with the park video. This is a little something that I tried. I will show you from, uh, oh, no, not like this, like this. It's, it's a pattern. You could call it a pattern, I guess. There are two enclosures made with rocks. And now you know why the park initially broke because yeah, the rocks do did break the, used to break the game, but they don't anymore. Thanks to our lovely developers. We have the Werhosaurus here. A nice starter dinosaur. I was going for like nature kind of vibe kind of feeling in this park. Very peaceful. So very few fences. I was using the rocks over here as barriers. And you can actually see the Werhos from up here. From up above. There's also guest section with chairs and I added the new ember and let me actually get down from this side and here we have a similar enclosure in which we have our cute little minmies and the Huayangosaurus. Huayango, one of my favorites from the first game. You can always hear me say something is my, you know, like a favorite dinosaur and usually is an herbivore. So I can't help it. I don't know why. It's just like, I'm such a pacifist. I'm such a peaceful person. I do love the carnivores though. I do love the goat feeding animation and everything. But yeah, this is another point where the guests can sit. But since, you know, like we have no shops here or anything, they are the, the guests in this game. The CGI is kind of dumb. So they don't go here. They, they're like, it's like, you got the view. You can sit here and you, you can view the dinosaurs. But they're like, no. Okay, this one goes to an enclosure that I will show you in just a few minutes, um, maybe seconds. I don't know how long this one will take. This is a guest section. This is where all the facility buildings are. We will not go there. This was back before the scientists were a thing, so we needed quite a lot of these buildings. And this is a square. I wanted 
a, a square. What, what can I say? A square with a few shops. The shops are all green because, yeah, we, we actually have a guest attraction here that I don't usually do. And we have this lovely seating area. And behind the seating area, the guests can actually be watching the Dryosaurus drinking, running around, being all noisy. Some of these animals, I mean, but they're not as noisy as these guys over here. And my favorite enclosure from this park, this is the Jurassic Park Germany Cascades. And where is all the, oh yeah, here they are. Why are they all here? I wanted them in the water. The Paraceralophus, one of my ultra favorite, favorite dinosaurs. This was before they could glow, so um, they are not the glowing kind, but the glowing dinosaurs are really, you know, like they're really dull and boring during the daylight, so I went for these vivid colors because I feel like this enclosure... Oh, this is not really vivid, I, that was a miss, but <laughs> uh, this enclosure really deserved some nice-looking, colorful dinosaurs. And uh, remember the viewing gallery that I told you about from the beginning. So you can go all the way over here. Here's another seating area and you get this wonderful view from the viewing gallery. But you can also take the road down here. Here I added some of these new birds that we have and you can actually see the enclosure quite nicely even, you know, like without using the viewing gallery. It looks quite nice I would say I did a video this week on how to create these kind of cascades I will link it in the description because it's it's like one of the enclosures that I am most proud of I do have to admit that I, I would be lying if I was all humble I really am proud of what I hear because this is uh, I love it. I just I just love it so much and um, yeah enough boasting <laughs> as you can see There's some crooked fence, but if it's crooked nicely like you know like smooth it out. It's uh, it's okay uh, Here we have another small guest section with another enclosure that is barriered with rocks That's why this file broke initially and we have our underwater Tritonsaurus here and we have the Chasmosaurus, love the Chasmosaurus, love the crest, love the patterning on the crest. And I also love the Crichton. Crichton is so cute. Right? Right, Crichton? Eh, this is the underwater Crichton. And uh, the whole thing, the whole uh, square looks like this. I put in the viewing galleries. I wouldn't have put in the viewing, viewing galleries at all. But I put them so that the people actually do walk around, you know, like it's it's it always doesn't Look good when the people just don't walk there because there's nothing there. Well, according to their humble opinion Don't mind the, the the fence ending here just like that I should have added some trees over there because I like to play pretend that the fences kind of like go You know like behind the trees where we cannot see them but we didn't have the chance back then. Now we do, so I could have, yeah, I could have thought about it, but, you know, I added some fountains and some ambers, and I was, like, so happy about it. Who cares about the fences, right? Well, um, the guests do. <laughs> this is the Kentrosaurus. I will be using the new Kentrosaurus that we have, the uh, Camp Cretaceous Kentrosaurus, pretty soon, because I don't really like how small these are. Ooh, these are wild! And, uh, whoops, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, milady. <laughs> Didn't mean to. And we have the Nautosaurus here. I was hell, well, hell bent. I was, I wanted to use the dinosaurs. I wasn't hell bent on it. <laughs> I wanted to use the dinosaurs that I don't usually use in my parks. And when I settled on all herbivores, I was like, okay, let's do it. And that's why we have these little guys over here. Where are they? Over here. Here we have the Polacanthus. One of those that I rarely use because I couldn't care less about him. But he is cute. He is nice. Look at that face. Look at the little face. Look at those horns. And we also have one that I actually found out. You, can you see this? <laughs> 
One that I actually found out that is very nice, and that's the Sora Pelter. They're not... Come on. Come on, flower! They're not really colorful, so that's why I don't really tend to like them that much, but it has a cool design, and you, you forget when you, when you don't use the dinosaur because you don't really care about the dinosaur, you do forget how beautiful it can be. So, yes, Sauropelta, you're beautiful. Polacanthus, you're beautiful too. Love you. And let's go around from this side. So this is where the Kentros are. And when we go over here, this is a really a complicated zoo. <laughs> we'll first visit the fish tank. We'll visit the lagoon. I added the lagoon sign over here because I'm good. And here we have the plesiosaurus. Not exactly. Oh, I love this skin. I love this skin. I, I wanted to show you this one. This oily, what is it? Olive skin, black one with this pattern. I mean, wow. Yeah, it's not exactly an herbivorous dinosaur, but it's a marine reptile. It's a fish eater, so he gets a pass, I guess. Okay, but let me unpause this, and let's go back. You can already see these guys over here. It's my favorite Mutaborosaurus and the Brachiosaurus. And I put the enclosure, uh, we'll show you from up above. I put the enclosure around the lagoon and then again I used fences over here because I was like okay it's the brachiosaurus so we should have we should have some fences but I put some rocks over here and some planters over here so they, they basically cannot get behind this line this is something that I don't ever do like not not usually do and it's crooked paths but it is crooked in a way that uh, it's smoothed out so it will get a pass. It will get a pass at this time. Again, I added a fountain over here in front of the viewing gallery. There wouldn't even have to be a viewing gallery here, but we know that the guests or the AI is programmed in that way. And I've already talk, talked about it. And here we go up again. And in this swampy enclosure, we have the other hadrosaurs. I was, I really wanted to do a swamp here. And the ultimate swamp creature is the Tsukimimus. And this one is drinking from the ground. The ultimate swampy creature is the Tsukimimus. And then I was like, but I don't really want to use carnivores in this park because this is an all herbivore park. So I was like, okay, hadrosaurs. Hadrosaurs should be fine and i was surprised how much i love the uh, so many trees i can get through how much i love the olora titan i mean the crests the coloring and everything it looks a little like a horse but i do love it i found out that i actually do love olora titan and this one is in the tree get out buddy this is i think this color is the one that i love the best not really sure though. When it comes to the Cintosaurus, I do love this yellow one, but I also love this blue one. And I was using the Temskaya trees and all kinds of trees. I do have a tutorial on how to create a swamp in every single environment, so uh, I will also link that one. And the idea came from this actually, so I'm happy that I can finally show you the the enclosure and here we have another guest section and our two little sauropods the amargosaurus again rock barriers made it all natural excuse my french <laughs> and uh, this is how the enclosure looks from uh, above it's a little hard actually it's heart shaped so funny. And this one over here, this citadel or what is whatever that is, it's for the homalocephaly. Another very noisy creature. So we will not go that close, but they're here. <laughs> they have their little enclosure. Again, I was using rocks as barriers, so well, the whole thing looks like this from up above. Um and that's why the, the park initially broke, because of the rocks. And here's another guest section, another hotel. 
Now that I think about it, I should have put monorails in here because, you know, like people living in this hotel have to walk with all their bags all the way from up there. No, they do leave their bags in the in the visitor center in the front, the the the, the check-in, the what was it? The, the shelter. Yeah, I do forget the word shelter because I don't ever use it. And they uh, do leave their bags there and they just like enjoy they they take them to the hotel with the car or something. I don't know. You can think whatever you like about it. <laughs> this is another guest section and uh, here I built a Stonehenge. Stonehenge? Stonehenge. I know it's not the most inventive idea ever and I know that many people have already had this idea with these rocks but I was like let me use it at least once and here we have our Draco Rex none of them are in the sunlight I love this color over here and people can see it through here and which way should we go first? We should, yeah, let's visit the lagoon. Um, but you can already see the dinosaurs. I will show you the, the aerial view first so that you know what's going on actually. So you can get to the lagoon over here and behind the lagoon there is this enclosure that borders with this enclosure with the rocks. So this is another enclosure. There is another enclosure over here and these are also enclosures that I will show you. So let me first show you the lagoon and uh, I think that you can already see that in the lagoon the lagoon with the view we have our chronosaurus with my favorite skin the blue one don't know exactly which one that is because it was so long ago that I did this park it's been 84 years it's been 84 years will we get a show do you guys want to eat something nope and this is the Camarasaurus, another one that I don't always, like, always never use, so I really, and the Ankylosaurus. I really made sure to use all the herbivores, well, not all the herbivores, there is one that is missing, two, two actually, two herbivores are missing. One of them by accident, one of them because I, I was like, nah, you got your chance in the last part, buddy no need to have you here again. Please do guess in the comments if you know which two herbivores did not make the cut. This is a Triceratops Stegosaurus enclosure. I was trying to go for a redwood forest and I used these kind of trees. I, I never remember these names of these trees, but I didn't like these trees that much. But if you want to create the illusion of it being pine trees, mixed with redwood trees this is the best that we can do with it and now that we can actually add these trees individually we can actually do like a real redwood forest not you know whatever this is but i was pretty satisfied with it i'm like it's okay i guess it looks fine to the other side we have uh cynoceratops this is the one with my favorite skin. I used this skin in my latest One Biome, Six Different Enclosures video for the Alpine Biome. So uh, you will find the skin over there if you want to know. And uh, another one that I don't use that often, and that's the Metaborosaurus. But I love these colorings and he's so cute. And he's actually really cute. And the enclosure is right at the border. So they have this wonderful... Wonderful! Sie haben diesen wonderful view over here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I couldn't resist. So they have this wonderful view. And the guests can go this way to see this enclosure with the Iguanodon. One of those dinosaurs that gr that I grew to love it. That, that I grew to love it. That I grew to love. <laughs> Uh, especially this yellow one. This yellow one is just so gentle and so gracious. Yes, buddy. So it's all structured in a way that, uh, let me show you. We have a fence over here. So this is the only fence that we actually have here. Plus, yeah, actually this one, this one over here. Yeah. But then this is all rocks. 
and the barrier between the iguanodons and the camarasaurus and the and what is it the ankylosaurus that's also just rocks and if we continue to this side we have one of the other cute ankylosaurus that i really really love and that's the uaplocephalus again on the edge of the map don't look over here because this is supposed to be full with other enclosure where's the other two uaplos did they did they jump off the cliff like for real or <laughs> i know that they can but like where the freak are they oh over here they're over here they're here hello now that i think about it you know like this they could no could they could they escape easily i don't know well, let's play pretend that there's something holding them there and it makes for cool pictures <laughs> Okay, here we go up to oversee the enclosures that I've already showed you from the ground up. Here we have a little guest section with a few shops. And here we have the watching towers and the viewing galleries uh, from which we can see the Camarasaurus and the Ankylosaurus. Also the Chronosaurus when it jumps for the shark. We can all see it from here. And also we have another nice enclosure over here in which we have another sauropod, the Mementisaurus, and another horse. <laughs> I, I don't know which one of them looks more like a horse, if, the, if, if it's the uh, Edmont, Edmontosaurus or the Loro Titan. Not really sure. But I found out that the Edmontos, are they gonna social interact? Are they gonna? Are they gonna? Are they gonna? Are we gonna get the interaction? No? Yes! Yes, we do! That was underwhelming. I thought that they were jumping around more. My Asaurus are jumping around more. I found out that the Edmontosaurus can produce so many beautiful colors. Just try it. Try it one day. This one is leaping. And we also have these chickens here. We have the Archaeornithomimus. Hello everyone, this is Editing Tommy speaking. I have decided to split this park tour into two parts because it was becoming freakishly long. It's 40 minutes long and I didn't want to barf the, you know, like whole 40 minutes at you. Even though I know that there are those of you who would watch the whole thing, but I do need to be gentle towards the people who don't like the longer videos. But part two will be coming next week. And this will also give me time to catch up with my other projects because I have been extremely busy lately. So in the meantime, thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, please give me a like, a comment, and you can share it with your friends. And if you like the content, please consider subscribing because there is much more of this coming. So thank you again and have a great day. Bye-bye.